Pluto has always been a mystery for scientists. It is cold, it is dark, plus it is located in the farthest corner of the solar system. This photo was taken by the first spacecraft ever to visit Pluto. The President, Council and Fellows of the Royal Astronomical Society sending the Lowell Observatory their heartiest congratulations on the great discovery of the trans-Neptunian planet. Imagine the night sky, the moon hanging high and five classical planets doing their celestial dance. But wait! Astronomers armed with telescopes uncovered a mysterious sixth player. Uranus, identified by Sir William Herschel in 1781, hit through the cosmic community for a loop. Something big had to be out there, and after some intense stargazing, astronomers Adams and Le Verrier revealed Neptune in 1846. Eight planets, including Earth, were accounted for. Now keep your eyes on the cosmic prize. Astronomers studying Neptune noticed its peculiar wobble, predicting the existence of a ninth planet. Enter Clyde Tombaugh in 1930, who spotted a cold, distant rock that would be christened Pluto, named after the god of the underworld in ancient Greece. But Pluto was not your typical planet. Unlike its larger, gaseous counterpart, Pluto was a rock, not much bigger than some hefty asteroids. Plus, it had this funky elliptical orbit that set it apart from the planetary pack. Debate ensued, but for about 70 years, Pluto kept its planetary status, mainly because, well, what else could it be? Meet Percival Lowell, the cosmic detective who had a hunch that something big was hiding at the edge of our solar system. Picture this, wobbly orbits of Uranus and Neptune, a shroud of darkness, and Lowell tirelessly peering through the Flagstaff, Arizona Observatory. He was on the hunt for the elusive Planet X, a mysterious ninth planet causing cosmic chaos. Now, fast forward to the winter of 1930. Enter Clyde Tombaugh a 24-year-old observatory assistant armed with patience and determination. As he meticulously compared night sky photographs, he spotted a tiny speck of light moving against the starry backdrop. Bingo! It was Planet X, exactly where Lowell had predicted. March 13, 1930, the Lowell Observatory announces the discovery of the ninth planet on its founder's birthday. And kudos to an 11-year-old English schoolgirl, Venetia Burney, who suggested the name Pluto, beating out contenders like Minerva and Erebus. But as astronomers got to know Pluto better, it turned out to be the oddball of the solar system. Its orbit was a wild ride, the most elliptical and tilted of any planet. Imagine this, during its 248-year journey around the Sun, Pluto swung inside Neptune's orbit. And here's the kicker. Despite early rumors that it might be bigger than Jupiter, Pluto is tinier than Earth's own moon. As astronomers scratched their heads, wondering if Pluto got VIP access to the Planetary Club based on inflated credentials. A bombshell dropped in 1992. MIT scientists Jane Liu and David Jewett discovered the Cupier Belt, a celestial junkyard beyond Pluto's turf. Hundreds of Pluto-sized buddies were hanging out there, raising some serious celestial eyebrows. Fast forward to 2005, enter Mike Brown and his Caltech crew. They introduced us to Eris, a heavyweight in the Coupier belt, showing Pluto up in the mass department. The International Astronomical Union, IAU, convened in Prague in August 2006, and the plan was wild. Expand the solar system to 12 planets, including Pluto and its moon Charon as a twin planet. The big bosses at the International Astronomical Union, IAU, decided to change the rules of the planet game. According to the new rules, a celestial body needed to do three things. Go around the sun, be round because of its gravity, and clear the neighborhood around its orbit. Guess what? Pluto didn't make the cut. This meant Pluto was no longer a planet. It was like Pluto got a cosmic pink slip at the age of 76 because it didn't have enough gravity power to control the space around it. Enter a cast of characters, Quarar, Sedna, Orcus, Makimaki, and others. These distant rocks raised an eyebrow or two. Were they also planets? The plot thickened in 2005 with the discovery of Eris, a rock that not only resembled Pluto but seemed to outshine it. So the big question is, did our solar system boast eight planets, 
10, or perhaps even dozens. The International Astronomical Union, IAU, convened in August 2006 to settle the score. Picture a room full of astronomers grappling with a decision that would reshape our cosmic understanding forever. The verdict was in, folks. The IAU realized that all major planets had something in common. They cleared their orbits of celestial clutter. But Pluto, well, it had companions, cosmic buddies hanging out in its orbital neighborhood. The conclusion? Pluto didn't make the planetary cut anymore. Pluto, along with its buddies, Eris, Ceres, Makimaki, and Haumea, got a new title, Dwarf Planet. Some scientists thought this was a win for science, but for many of us who grew up thinking there were nine planets, it felt like a space heartbreak. Imagine this, a model of Pluto on a sidewalk in Washington, D.C. became a sort of a space memorial. People put flowers around it, taped rest in peace cards, and even wrote a note saying, we'll miss you, on behalf of the eight remaining planets. It was like Pluto was a beloved character in our cosmic storybook, and suddenly it was gone. A lot of folks couldn't accept it, and the streets became a marketplace for t-shirts shouting, Pluto was framed, and back in my day, Pluto was a planet. Things got so wild that an astronomer named Mike Brown, who found Eris, wrote a whole book about how I killed Pluto and why it had it coming. Talk about a cosmic drama. For those who grew up with Pluto in their science books and on space-themed stuff, it was a big deal. Some people questioned the IAU's decision because only a small group of scientists voted on Pluto's fate. The heartbreak was real. But guess what? Pluto is still making cosmic headlines. In 2015, NASA's New Horizons spaceship flew super close to Pluto, taking amazing pictures and sending back cool info. It even had the ashes of Clyde Tomba, the person who discovered Pluto, on board. Imagine that! Pluto, the little dwarf planet, getting all this attention. More than a year later, New Horizons is still sending back stunning pics of Pluto. Forget about the dwarf label. Pluto has mountains made of ice, frozen plains, and, get this, a bright heart shape near its belly. Pluto's got some serious cosmic charm, and whether it's a planet or a dwarf planet, it's still stealing the show in our solar system. Over a year post-flyby, New Horizons is still beaming back mind-blowing high-res pics of Pluto. Turns out, our little rock in space is more lively than we thought. Picture water ice mountains, frozen nitrogen plains, and, wait for it, a bright heart-shaped region just above its equator. Pluto's got style, and it's a welcome revelation for Pluto lovers everywhere. So whether it's a planet or a dwarf planet, Pluto's journey is far from over. The cosmic controversy might still be smoldering. But one thing's for sure, Pluto's heart is shining bright in the vastness of our solar system. Keep dreaming among the stars, space enthusiasts. And that's a wrap. How fair do you think it was to Pluto? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more.